I change poopy diapers all day long. Yeah, I wipe snot and wash mysterious substances out of laundry. That's hard, but I'll tell you what, I like pretzel day. I have to admit, I've been really looking forward to this video for several reasons, one of which because I get to use my stand mixer, which in a way I feel bad about because I've really tried to pick recipes that you didn't have to have a stand mixer for and technically you don't with this one, but you're gonna be needing for like 35 minutes. So I guess it could be a good tricep workout. I'm also excited because we get to be kind of sciency. That's right, we're using chemistry today. Important thing to note before we even get started is there's gonna be quite a few tools you're gonna to need on hand. I usually try to do the whole mise en place and have everything prepared ahead of time. Sometimes you can get away with not doing that, but with this one, you absolutely need to have everything ready. And I'm gonna show you what you need. First thing you're gonna need is a large pot because you're gonna to need to fill it with 10 cups of water, which I'll explain a little bit more about later. If you have a roasting pan that is stovetop safe, bonus points, you should use that. It'll make your life a lot easier. But I don't, so I'm using the pot. Also, with your stand mixer, hopefully you have one. If you don't, borrow one, and if not, just prepare your arms for it. But if you do have one, you need a dough hook. Uh, you're also going to need a large, large spatula and something that is slotted. Okay, because I usually end up doing a combo type situation. Lastly, but certainly not least, um, get a beer. It's going to make it way more enjoyable for you and going to make you feel as though it's Oktoberfest. Just saying. So if you're ready, let's get baking. The very first thing you're going to need is a cup and a half of warm water. We're going for, again, like I always reference that baby bath water temperature. To that, we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. Once you have the sugar and the salt in the warm water, we're gonna take two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast or one pack and sprinkle it on top of the water. What we're doing by prepping the yeast on top of the warm water with the sugar and salt is we're kind of jump starting it. And by adding the sugar and the salt, we're giving the yeast something to eat that's gonna start to form the bacteria that creates the rise in your bread. In the bowl of your stand mixer, you are going to add 22 ounces of all-purpose flour, which is approximately four and a half cups. Also, you're going to take uh, two ounces of softened unsalted butter, uh, which is about four tablespoons. You will know the yeast is ready when it starts to, well, smell yeasty. And also you'll see these little teeny tiny bubbles starting to form underneath the layer of yeast cake on the top. And it's gonna to start to look foamy and dense and cloud the water. When your yeast is finished snacking and is ready, we are going to add it to the stand mixer with the 22 ounces of flour, the two ounces of softened unsalted butter. Uh, it's helpful to have a rubber spatula on hand to get all of that yeast that has stuck to the walls of the measuring cup. We are going to adjust our mixer to low speed for approximately four to five minutes or until everything is incorporated and starts to become soupy and sticky. Then, after that, we're going to bring it up to medium and let it go for 10 minutes or until it's pulling off the walls completely. Your mixer might even be rattling a little bit and it's gonna look shiny and elastic. Nobody wants to hear that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and then I'll show you what it looks like and spare you the If you can see, it's mixed, but it is fairly sticky and is clumpy in some areas. It has not formed into a cohesive ball yet and it won't until probably around six minutes in. So we're gonna start that now on medium. Tiny little interjection. During the process that you're spinning it on medium, if you notice that the dough is climbing up the side wall, that's not out of the usual, but just go ahead and turn it down, turn it off, and push it back down in there and start over. By kneading it for that long, what you're doing is building up as much gluten as possible and creating a really tight protein structure. This is what it's gonna look like. It is extremely firm to the touch uh, and it's heavy and dense, but also smooth on the outside. Remove the bowl from your stand mixer and we're gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil to the inside. Don't get crazy, just a little. And then we're gonna place this inside, cover it and let it rise for about 55 minutes. Uh, pro tip, if you think to, 
You should really add vegetable oil to a little squirt bottle. It makes it so easy and we use it all the time in our kitchen, like for sauteing or if you're in the middle of browning food and you need to add a little more oil, it's really quick and handy. Then stick your dough in the bottom, swirl it around. I usually like to roll mine over just to make sure that the sides are well greased. Once we have our pretzel shaped, we're actually going to dip them into a boiling baking soda bath and let them go for about 30 seconds before we put them on a sheet pan. By boiling them in an alkaline solution before baking, you're affecting the Maillard reaction that happens during the bake, which is just a fancy way of saying the browning process. This is gonna cause the pretzel to be that classic pretzel that you think of. Very, very shiny, dark brown on the outside with a crisper outside, but a softer center. Aside from the Maillard reaction and how that's affected, the baking soda solution is actually responsible for the flavor of the pretzel that you're used to. Long story short, just do it. Just boil it in the baking soda water, okay? Just trust me. Also, in this time, I usually get my baking sheets ready. You're probably gonna need two because these are really fluffy, large pretzels. I like to lightly oil the pan and then stick down parchment paper and then actually add a tiny bit of oil to that. This dough is really sticky. Another little thing you might want on hand is take a paper towel and get it damp because when you boil baking soda, tiny little particles are going to come out into the air and land on top of your cooktop and it's gonna turn white and be dried out and just look hideous. So if you stay on top of it, it's less to clean later. Hello and welcome to 55 Minutes in the Future. If you have arrived safely, and I hope you have, you will be happy to find a very, 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 very large and fluffy dough. If you're like me, then you got your water boiling and your oven preheating to 450, and now it's time to really get pretzeling. Also, I forgot to mention, make an egg wash, okay? So just crack a couple eggs and a tablespoon of water into a bowl and then just whisk the schnot out of it. Split the dough into eight equal pieces, and once you've done that, you're going to place it on the counter and then start working the dough with your hands outward into a long cylindrical strip. Be careful not to tear, so if it feels like it's not going to give, just give it a second and then try again. I've noted that it kind of works better to pull your hands outward while rolling back and forth. You're going for 24, 22-ish inches. Next, you will take it, form a U. I'm pulling this side out a little because I'm noticing that it looks a little bit clumpy. Then. Twist them, turn once, and stick down. Cross. Well, that was just about the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. That was like National Geographic scary. As you can see, she is rolling. Grab your little slotted spoon that you hopefully have. And I like to place the pretzel on top. It just makes it a little safer. 30 seconds later, we will pull it out. And this is why I said to have a secondary spatula if you pull it out upside down, just kind of flip it over and then you can place it on your pan. You just want to try to avoid the hot, boiling, baking soda lava. I mean, for the record, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, that's like a science experiment. Speaking of science, it's pretty funny actually that I like baking and that I'm intrigued by the science behind it because I uh, failed chemistry in high school. I actually had to go back and take a summer school class. Side note, let me tell you something totally off subject and ridiculous. So my husband and I met in junior high. I know, I know. And in my high school chemistry class, being the 16 year old infatuated girl that I was, love struck and crazed, I would, uh, I would write Macy Hart's Nico on all of my chemistry assignments. I know. Honestly, I cringe just saying it out loud. Anyway, um, my very uh, social chemistry teacher came up to me one day and said, you don't really think that's gonna last, do you? Like statistically it won't, so you might as well stop writing it. Who does that? I mean, whether or not he's correct in that statement, who says that to a 16 year old girl? But he failed me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
Anyway, I digress. Back to these pretzels. You see what I mean about the baking soda nightmare? I'm sorry. I promise it's worth it. They're really delicious. Now that the pretzels have formed, I went around and kind of reshaped a couple that were popping up and just pushed them down and made them look a little bit prettier. We're going to take our egg wash and we are going to just smear that all over the top, making sure that you get it down into the cracks and that it truly is covered evenly. Funny thing about the egg wash is you got to make sure that you don't have a bunch of it clumped up around the base of whatever baked good that you are egg washing. Um, I learned the hard way that if you don't clean that up, you'll have scrambled eggs on the pan. Take your coarse ground salt. Uh, I like to just pour some into my hand and then I just generously sprinkle the top of each pretzel with the coarse salt. Once you have them egg washed and sprinkled, we're going to place them in a 450 degree oven um, stacked one on top of the other. They're going to bake for about 15 minutes. Halfway through the process, I switch them and turn them. You guys are going to freak out when you see these. And it smells like a pretzel stand in the mall right now. Ooh. Okay. Blast it. Isn't it amazing when it all just comes together and it's like, there they are. They're perfect. Tearing them open, you can totally see just how soft and squishy, yet how crisp and smooth the outside is. Melt some butter, make some cheese, whatever you decide to eat them with, just make sure you make them, okay? Get out there and bake, y'all.